Hello, everyone. So there is a lot of hype around the ethics of artificial intelligence. Everyone, as we know, everyone wants to work in the field. Many claim to be experts in this field. But few of us agree on what AI ethics actually means or how to distinguish between good and bad ethics work. A symptom of this um, conceptual confusion, I would call it, are calls by activists, scholars, um, for the abandonment of AI ethics and for its replacement with alternatives that are not ethics, so law or other um, such alternatives. And my belief is that these calls for the abandonment of AI, of AI ethics are grounded in a misconception or misunderstanding of what ethics actually is. So this is what the paper is about, is trying to clarify a confusion. An example, in May last year, Google announced that it would introduce an AI ethics advisory council. The presence, amongst other factors, of an anti-LGBT advocate provoked a backlash amongst the general public and Google's employees, which in turn led to a withdrawal of the initiative. Instances such as this episode, but many other episodes exist, as many of you know, have led scholars in this field to describe corporate ethics efforts as ethics washing. Namely, attempts to wash a company's reputation through the language or appearance of ethics. But when we speak of ethics washing, what do we mean, and specifically, what is ethics? So descriptively, um, critics of corporate ethics practices have portrayed ethics in at least four ways. They have portrayed ethics as a set of institutions, be it ethics bodies or in-house philosophers, or AI ethics experts embedded in companies or um, existing in isolation as consultants. Secondly, they have understood ethics as a strategy, either a strategy aimed at deregulation and self-regulation, or a PR communication strategy aimed at reputational gain for companies. A third way of portraying ethics has been as an alternative to deliberative democracy, political participation, and social organizing. And a fourth way of understanding ethics has been as a form of ivory tower mentality, an apolitical intellectualization of real life problems made by an elite for an elite. So in this paper, I argue that each of these ways of portraying ethics is actually somewhat reductive and simplistic. And I distinguish instead between ethics as a mode of inquiry and reasoning, which I call moral philosophy, and ethics as a practice, an institution, and a corporate strategy. And I argue that conflating the two and lumping them together in one critique leads to overbroad claims and risks obscuring the importance and value of moral philosophy. And this is what I call ethics bashing. So ethics bashing is the attempt to conflate too many meanings of ethics in one same word. So then the paper makes several other arguments that I cannot get into in depth here, but I welcome any comments in the Q&A or you can come talk to me. And I'll just summarize four of them. So first, uh, philosophy has different kinds of roles. We value philosophy for different reasons. So we can value moral philosophy as a process that we engage in that is valuable in, in itself, and it has intrinsic value. Or we can value moral philosophy for the things that it brings about, for its consequences, the impacts it can have, the effects that it can lead to. And having these two different ways of valuing philosophy in mind, we can formulate two general rules of thumb for thinking about corporate ethics practices. So the more an exercise of moral thinking is valued as a process for the value that it kind of has in itself, rather than for the pre-designed results, 
that are already intended before the kind of the exercise of engaging in deliberation and, and moral thinking, the more we should be wary about the exercise. And the second rule of thumb is that when we look at the consequences, the effect, the intended aims of a moral AI ethics exercise, we should be wary of results that are very aligned with the interests of those mandating the exercise, of those funding the philosophers or the boards that we're talking about. And we should be more welcoming towards exercises of moral reasoning or thinking that lead to results that benefit the public at large. So these are two rules of thumb. The second uh, argument that I make is that notwithstanding the impact, the good that any corporate ethics in-house or outside a company may have, we should be somewhat critical or remain, um, yes, we should scrutinize um, the epistemic value that this work can have, and in particular, uh, the fact that it might create resistance against alternatives to self-regulating uh, AI or um, kind of ethical thinking or um, in-house initiatives. And for instance, it might inhibit the attempts to look for different kinds of solutions in terms of state intervention or legislation. Thirdly, I argue that if we want to take the value of moral philosophy and ethics seriously, there is no such thing as non-ethics. So calls for the abandonment of ethics actually are misleading because they fail to see law and other alternatives as also embedded in some conception of morality and ethics. And indeed, ethics is unavoidable as a mode of thinking and allows us and is what we do when we're weighing and thinking about and evaluating different approaches to AI policy and how to regulate or think about the impact of AI on society. And finally, I argue that context matters. Um, okay, I think there's some sort of whatever. Uh, context matters in that the the context in which we are engaging in moral thinking affects the kinds of results and prescriptions that we end up formulating. And so for instance, the wider the variety of factors that we include in our thinking, the more capacious the exercise, the more people the, 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 the interests of the more people we take into account in our thinking about whether AI um, or a, a given technology should or should not be deployed, the better the decisions that we will end up with. And so the final call is simply to engage in this process of ethical thinking about AI and new technologies with a critical eye, with humility, with intellectual curiosity, and with open, constant openness to revising our views. Thank you. <laughs>